And welcome to Doer TV and our presentation of My Insurance Sucks. I'm sure that that's the way you feel on occasion when you try to go get something done and they don't pay for it or they do something that is a change in, in prescription and <laughs> you didn't want that. So with that, I, I've got Mark Roden on the show again because he's the insurance expert. He knows how to hip, hip, hip you out if you're in Texas. And if you're in other parts of the country, then just understand that's Texas talk for help you. <laughs> Mark, thanks for doing the show again. Thank you, Patrick. It's great to be here. Well, if there was ever a crisis, I know sometimes in media they, they manufacture crises, but this is a real deal. Group insurance. If you have group insurance, you're probably well aware of the your share of the premium. The premiums are going up. Your share of what you pay when you're at the doctor or hospital, it's going up. The employer spend an, an incredible amount of time trying to select the perfect plan, the right PPO. Shall we go PPO versus HMO? All this exercise in futility only to go whenever I meet with clients, this is how I got the name of the show, hey Mark, my insurance sucks. No matter what they do, what they choose, the employers are really not satisfied with what, what they get and then the costs are just going up and up. 2.3 million employers don't even have group insurance because it's a never ending battle. What happens is the employer has to pay in Texas and most states half of the employee only costs. And so that cost is so high that even if it's cut in half is to the employee, maybe it's a young and healthy guy that needs a lot of beer money and he's not going to elect the insurance. Well, guess what that does to other, if enough people make that same decision, now the small employer doesn't even have enough participation in order to offer group insurance. So it's a real quandary, but the good news, Patrick, is I've got a solution for a lot of my under 50 life employer groups because again PPACA, Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, whatever you want to call it, they're going to mandate, it's called the employer mandate, they're going to mandate that those employers over 50 lives have to buy group insurance. They don't have a choice. So we're talking about really the majority of businesses out there, the small group client. So let me make sure that I get this right. So today's show you're aiming it towards those small small employer groups is that what you just said yes that's that's correct so, under 50 lives like a you know how many employees they have okay so they have under 50 employees um, how low does it go I mean under 50 is down to one but well yeah a lot of uh, startups or you know even existing businesses might have one or two uh, uh, the definition of a group is more than one so two two up to fifty. Excellent. So what what should they be concerned about now? What are some of the things that you wanted to cover on today's issue of my insurance sucks? Well I've, I've spoken enough about the bad stuff now let's get to the solution. Here is the great part of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, the main driver to this is individual health insurance. Individual health insurance is now guaranteed issue. So Joe over there that's a diabetic, as an example, in accounting, he can now go out and get individual health insurance. Um, there's no more underwriting, so guaranteed issue is huge. Okay, the second part of this is the, the federal government, through the IRS, is now offering subsidies to those people who meet the criteria based on household income and household size. So how many belly buttons live in the house and mama shaker and daddy shaker added together how much they make. So the kicker to this is if either one of those individuals is, has a group health insurance plan, guess what Patrick? They don't qualify for any subsidies. So in essence these small employers that have lower income employees are actually hurting the employees by offering group health insurance which probably is overpriced in the in in the first place because they're going to negate the federal subsidies that are now available through the marketplace. Isn't that going to cause people to leave their group insurance plans? The answer to that is yes and that's going to add to the crisis. We're going to have a a mass exodus out of the small group market when enough employers 
figure this out. Uh, and that's exactly what my agency did. We have 17 employees. We stopped our group health plan because we don't pay for anyone's homeowner's insurance. We don't pay for their auto insurance. I know it's, it's a way to attract good employees, but whenever the costs are so high, the net net result is you still have employees that are not satisfied. With the individual, another benefit of the end of, going back to the benefits, another benefit of the individual health insurance is guess what? They're empowered to choose whatever insurance they want, whatever carrier they want, what HMO, PPO. So you're you're giving it all back to the employee with more choice, lower cost. Except that what I just I guess I'm one of these guys that looks at it and goes, there's no free lunch. Okay. So you 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 know mom and pop are um, mom works for the bus barn and she gets health insurance okay so if uh, if she is with them then dad gets on the the boat too but they're paying five six hundred dollars a month or more for that that privilege what I just heard was is that she could step off and mom and dad can get individual insurance with government assistance that could all override you know offset their expenses tr tremendously is that what you just said well let's see if I can get my screen can you see my screen there Patrick? I can you have got okay. it good so go ahead awesome well this this is an exact example this is actually these stats are out of Illinois but in in your example Actually, that family coverage, let's just use your example, might be closer to a thousand dollars or more, over a thousand. That's seven thousand two hundred and forty eight dollars uh, on the individual side, and it's over eighteen thousand uh, for maybe the your example, they had some kids. So I just have single and family here. I don't have employee and spouse. But look at the cost savings on that family coverage versus an individual price plan, individual health insurance. It's over sixty percent. On the single, maybe it's a single person, their employer plan is going to cost over $6,000. If they went out to the marketplace and chose an individual plan, it's $2,400 a year, over 3% savings. Now, this does not even take in consideration the subsidies that are available out there. This is just going back to the pure cost and the group coverage. Okay, I'm not a math major, I'm an Aggie. So give me those numbers again it's 18,000 times 60 percent off uh, if I'm not mistaken that's around six or seven thousand dollars a year is that about what you said okay I'll, I'll bring them back up here they are again yeah the the cost of an employer plan for a family is about eighteen thousand a year so my math I think a thousand would be twelve that was about fifteen hundred a month and that's typical um, and then the cost, if you were to go out that same family to go out and buy an individual health plan, uh, typically that cost is going to be seven thousand two hundred forty-eight a year. In this example, I think these are from the Illinois uh, area, but yeah, that's the savings, sixty percent savings there uh, per employee. So you take a, a group size of say ten, you're talking about a tremendous amount of saving on the individual health insurance market versus the group insurance market. Okay, so I'm just again, I'm an, I don't want to harp on this, and it's just that you know if people are watching this afterwards, I want to make sure that they really follow that through, because um, a lot of people aren't insurance agents like you. They don't, we don't get it. So put that back up there again, and uh, if I read that correctly, I've got a family, uh, the in the individual. Let's put that up there again. I'm sorry. Having technical difficulty. Where did it go? <laughs> uh, put me on your screen. There you go. Okay. Is that? Did you see it there? I, I it's coming back and forth. All right. Is that's probably not the not the one we wanted, but it's. Is, can you still see it? Sort of. It's small, but that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. The the this is just a, a cost of an employer plan. Uh, on the family is seven thousand two hundred forty eight dollars a year. And, uh, excuse me, that's the individual. The employers is eighteen thousand. So this is typical cost of of, of group health insurance uh, for a family. Now the employer might subsidize that if someone says, "Well, I'm only paying five hundred dollars." Yeah, your employer is subsidizing that 
greatly. Maybe they're paying all of the employee only cost. Uh, so that same plan on the individual health insurance market for that family, this particular family, is only $7,248. Um, so you're talking about a tremendous amount of savings in this example. Okay, so that's savings for the employer? Yes, it's on both. Uh, let's see if I can get that off, get my screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, there's Patrick, so you, yeah, at least there I am. you. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, that's, okay. so that's that's the cost of the the real cost. That what makes it difficult, and this is, might be uh, what you're, you're what you're pointing at, is the fact that when the employer subsidizes the plan, a lot of people don't know what the real costs are. Those are the real costs. There's nothing. There's like you just said. There's no free lunch. There's no magic bullet. The cost is the cost. And if you look at the statistics, this was just one example. I could give you hundreds of examples. Our particular rate that we were paying in our 17 Life group for family coverage was $1,400 a month for our family. That's what it was. So the, the agency paid for employee only, half employee only. Let's just say that was $400. I think it was actually $435. So if someone chose the $1,300, Minus the 200, they're left with 1,100. So uh, again, this is not even talking about the subsidies. And when the subsidies are added in, how does that affect things? Well, it affects it greatly because it's all based on your household size and your household income. Um, I have clients right now that are paying zero dollars net cost to them because they are lower income and so they're getting a lot of subsidy. Um, there was a great confusion on this, there were technical glitches, there's all sorts of problems uh, with if more people understood what's available and it, I think it starts while we're talking on this, I think it really starts with the employer. The employer is in a unique position to really educate their clients. Use half of that energy that they were using to try to select the magic carrier and the magic plan to make everyone happy to educate people, bring in the uh, counselors like myself to explain individually what's best for that family. So you, you get a totally different paradigm when you switch to individual based health insurance. Now what's the tax benefit of this? Well, the, the, the main thing about the taxes, uh, that's, the, that's a great question. The, the main thing that you want to do in this situation is use a strategy that still keeps the tax advantages to the employer and to the employee. So if it's set up right, uh, which is basically a health reimbursement program, it follows all of ERISA guidelines, HIPAA guidelines, the IRS guidelines, and the Affordable Care Act guidelines. So it's not simple, but if you speak to an expert like myself, we can walk you through how to do it, how to do it legally. It's section 105 of the IRS code. Uh, it's not that complicated. There's software out there that makes utilization for the employees easy for the employer. Uh, we're doing demos all the time and employers are just amazed that this is available and they're amazed at how simple it is. Well, I mean, one of the notes says that it's tax-free reimbursement of an individual health insurance, um, like up to 100%. What are you trying to say there, other than free lunch? Well, no, the, the, the mechanism is, is, is a tax-free reimbursement. So your group insurance, a lot of people have group health insurance because they can write all that up. If they, if they get half of the employee-only costs, then that's a write-off. Any payment that the employee makes, then that comes pre-tax. So you do not lose, if it's set up properly and legally, you do not lose those benefits. There are ways you can do what I'm explaining on a post-tax basis, but I think that that's not as attractive. If it's available, if the software and the, the law is such where you can do it tax-free, why in the world would you set something up like this where it's not still tax-free? Excellent. How can somebody get a hold of you, Mark? Well, uh, back at our uh, myinsurancesucks.com is my contact information. There's an easy web form 
like I said, we can do demos on this, uh, let you see it firsthand. It's more complicated, obviously, than a little 15-minute Google Hangout. I'm, I'm trying to be as, as specific as we can, but uh, if you don't talk to me, talk to someone who does know that this is available because it will really help a lot of people. And the people that really should engage with you are uh, business owners of less than 50 employees. Is that what you were saying? Yes, anyone, any small employers uh, that are under 50 lives. Um, there are some unique solutions, even over 50 lives. I, I've got other. It's not on, on today's subject, but uh, yeah, anyone that's not happy, thus the name, anyone that's not happy with their health insurance or their insurance, please contact me. If they could say, my insurance sucks, they should call you. Is that correct? That's correct, Patrick. <laughs> well, anything else you want to add for today? Otherwise, we'll sign off for another week and, and do it again. The same bat time, same bat channel next week. Sounds great. No, I think we filled the cup up today, and I sure do appreciate your help in getting the word out. Hey, it's always good, Mark. I appreciate good people that are trying to, to educate and serve the, the community and their, their clientele with good information the right way uh, and really teaching them the information that they need to get what they want, especially when their insurance sucks. <laughs> I know, that's corny. Hey, thanks again, folks. We'll see you all same bad time, same bad channel next week.